Okay, we got that first bearing off. And now we gotta get, well, this off of this. Looks like this has never been touched before. There's no welds. I watched a couple uh, five-star PWC videos and he was actually rebuilding one of these in the video. So I, get, I don't feel like it's super crazy now that I'm doing this, but I know that usually when they're into, they, they get welded afterwards, which sounds like a good idea. We're probably not gonna do it because I don't trust myself to not mess that part up. Unfortunately, during that process, the this like, it's like a, it's not plastic, composite, composite cage in this bearing broke. So now this bearing's bad, but rather it break on me during this process than out on the lake. All right, I know this looks like a pretty sketchy setup I got going on here, but you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so we got the end of the crank apart. Hopefully get this bearing off. There's a little like thrush washers. No, that does not look good if you're wondering. All of the needle bearings were actually in there. I dropped a bunch of them when I took it out. The actual rod does not feel bad. It doesn't look the greatest, but it doesn't feel bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I mean, it's probably not ideal. Yeah, I'd have to say we're, uh, we're probably pretty good. The new kit did come with a pin. It's not the same though. Doesn't have the hole through the middle. Um, so yeah, probably just gonna run the factory pin. Should be fine. Oh wow, has that been recording this whole thing? Okay, now let's try and get this out of here. The benefit of this is every time I press a piece off, the piece I have to catch gets lighter. All right, so we got that counterweight off and looking in this bearing and it does kind of look like it's just, this one got the worst of the rust. So, yeah, um, I don't know if I could clean that out. I'm probably actually gonna get a new bearing for that uh, because it takes a little bit to get to. So, probably gonna be a big break between this clip and the next clip where I have this bearing and the outer bearing, and then I can put it all together. So I will see you then. All right, so we're about a week later now. I got the new bearings. I got that bearing off. Uh, I didn't film it because I didn't really know what I was doing. I was trying to get it off without having to take the whole stack off. Uh, and what I found was, with an air hammer with this little goofy bit. If I get inside one of those holes, I could pop it off far enough to get my puller on it. And then uh, 
pull the bearing off. So now I'm gonna put new bearing on. You can find this hole, make sure it goes towards the spacer. Uh, just gonna heat this bearing up a little bit and set it on there. And then I got a feeler gauge to go in there to keep the bearing off of this spacer so that the spacer can still turn freely. There we go, just like that, just that easy. All right, so now we got the bearing on. Now comes a little bit more nerve wracking part. We gotta put this counterweight back on. And it's gotta line up. I've got a little scribe mark there. I also have a paint marker line. So we'll get her lined up on there. But the other thing is I have to figure out how I'm going to support that. So I think I'll need a flat plate and then maybe a small piece of flat stock to go in there to support that pin so I don't just push it into this counterweight. Okay, so I'm looking, I think I got that pretty darn spot on. Probably not gonna focus on that, but. Yeah, I, uh, I think I did pretty good. So I'm gonna get a straight edge, check this. I gotta find one, I don't know where mine went. And then, uh, yeah, we should be able to put the connecting rod on and put the last last piece on and then the last bearing. All right, so I got the crank over here in the top half of the case now. Uh, we gotta check the run out on this end shaft, the mag shaft. Uh, it's pretty big, there's a lot. All right, so we've moved around a little bit. Uh, I changed it up, I had the, the crank case sitting on some blocks that wasn't really working. So I went and got the cylinder and I hammered the piston out. That's rough, that's way rough. Uh, so I could set the crankcase on top of it. Uh, and then I can actually get a good swing on it without having to like take it out. So we're pretty good. I mean, it's like a little over a thou. And I think we're gonna call that good enough for who it's for. I've been beating the crap out of this thing for like 30 minutes. But uh, it's it's a weird finesse, but hit it as hard as you possibly can kind of thing. So I'm happy that this is done. I just gotta put that other bearing on and the crankcase should be good to go. All right, so here we go. Get all the bearings on. I don't have that seal yet, so I'm not gonna put the the rotor on there, but uh, yeah, I don't have to take the, the drive off to do these seals. But yeah, the crank's good now. 
And I think what I'm actually going to do, I am going to order this piece, try to find one of these used. I don't think this is really worth my time. Plus the pin for that bearing is basically gone. The bearing that was locked up. So I think it's worth my time and worth my money to just get a new one of these. Uh, as for the uh, cylinder, I'm going to try and do a sleeve in that. Uh, I found the sleeves and I think I found somebody to machine it once I'm done. So we're going to try to do that. I still have to get the exhaust off of it because I broke a bolt. But uh, yeah, so all of that will be hopefully in the next video. I'll get the or get a full gasket kit hopefully find the top of the crankcase for a decent price and get a a sleeve coming for the jug and then uh yeah from there it's should be pretty good to pretty easy to get it going so if you guys want to see the rest of this build hit that like button hit that subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one